Welcome, fiber friends. Okay, it's time for some knitting humor. You ready? <laughs> okay, who stole Peter Pan's yarn for his crochet project? Captain Hook. Yeah. Yeah. Evelyn. What? <laughs> Why did the Stitch download a dating app? Because it was a single crochet. I'm serious this time. This one is so funny. It's so good. So good. Okay. <laughs> what happened to the cat that ate a ball of yarn? It had mittens. <laughs> what the heck? Welcome, welcome, welcome to a very special edition of Frank and Frog Fiber Podcast. I'm Janine, and this is... Yarn. That is yarn, that's true. Is that gonna be your new name? <laughs> <laughs> and this is Evelyn. No, I'm Yarn. Oh, is your, her new name is Yarn. I think that's the best name ever because I always want yarn. <laughs> so this is, this is gonna be very, very good. Evelyn, do you know how many sweaters I've made you during your seven years on this planet? 215. You think I've made you 215? And 200. also this one. And this one, this one is my favorite. It's so fluffy. It is very soft, isn't it? That one's made out of Malabrigo oh, that I got at. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna fly. Or an actual <laughs> fly. <laughs> the knitting loft. Um, no, I have not made you. How many did you say? Two hundred. Yep. I have actually only made you twenty-one sweaters. But in seven years of you being alive, I think that's a lot of sweaters. What do you think? I do not know. I don't know what to say. You don't like all those sweaters I made for you? I actually do. And I love this sweater. Ah! No, don't eat my sweater. No, no, don't eat it. It's mm. not yummy. Yes, yes, it's very snuggly, isn't it? This one's made out of very soft merino wool. And it actually... Also this one. Yeah, yours is made out of merino wool, too. I'm surprised you're wearing that because it's very warm right now. This one's actually very, very... Yeah, show the back of it. So this is... A sweater that I will put the name yeah. up of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are from Toronto. I knit. I crochet. She is starting cross stitch. We already started this video. Thank you for your feedback. We already started this video. So why are you but we didn't them? tell them about this stuff. I teach high school. And if you like this podcast, you can like, subscribe, turn on notifications, right? What else can you do? Comment down below oh. if you like these videos. Comment down below if you like these videos. I mean, is that a hot YouTube tip or not? So Evelyn, is this like medium glam that we are today or is this like full glam? Oh my gosh, I, I'm actually really hot. <laughs> I'm up. So Just recently we were downtown because um, I was getting my drums fixed and we went into unit and this one was squeezing all the yarn and making some comments and just loving it in there. And this, Mine. Hmm, apparently she's uh, taking my yarn, yeah. Uh, this is some Shirley Bryan yarn um, that my friend Kathy gifted to me. So I'm still thinking very about what to make. Very soft. It is very soft. It's Good because- for making sweaters or soft. Hmm, highly my recommend. My mom actually made me some soft. I did make Should you some I socks. go get them? Sure. There they are. They're actually very nice. They're pretty soft. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which yarn you made this from, but it's very fluffy. They're made of hedgehog fibers Ooh. and the heels and toes are stitched together studio. Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, they are quite soft, aren't they? Especially for sock yeah, yarn. These on. Yeah, you can put those on. Um, so I don't have much to show today. Um no new acquisitions, but I do have my whips, my works in progress, and I'll show you what I've been doing. You know, when something just takes a hold of you and you just can't stop and you just need to keep going on that one project, that's definitely what happened to me this week. Also, I went camping at Bon Echo with my daughter, with Evelyn, um, for three days. So Mom, we're supposed to be talking about yarn. Mm, 
No talking about camping. So yes, my whip that I've been addicted to this week is the Stars in Your Hands shawl by Inez Sang. Ooh. Do you know why it's so soft, Evelyn? Do you know why? what that super soft yarn is why? called? It starts with a mo. Mohair? Yeah! What? She graduated from knowing yarn school. Love mohair. It's so soft. So fuzzy. So, um. Oh my god. What are you knitting on? I don't know what she's seeing down there. Um, but I'm almost finished this section of the shawl, and then we get into super fun bobble time. So, why this shawl is actually so much fun, but also maybe not the best like knit night shawl, is because you really need to pay attention between there being a strand of mohair all the time, which you need to make sure that you it's pick my up. Now. That you pick up, it's your pillow now. That you pick up both strands all the time. It's all lace pretty much, okay? <laughs> so there are knit three togethers, a lot of knit two togethers, um, and increases. So if you do not pay attention, uh, you'll find yourself very quickly in, in a, in a bad place um but i think having a super engaging project like this is uh really really fun <laughs> you like the tassels on that right now evelyn is sporting my what the fade she's doing a great job of modeling it looks like a flower yeah it kind of looks like a sea anemone right Okay, just, just a little window into our world. Okay, I'm getting so sweaty. Yeah, okay. maybe you should make a costume change now. Okay. Okay, so um, these are my um, Pride Month socks that weren't done for <laughs> for Pride Month. Um, but during the month of May, the Be a Freaking Unicorn Initiative, uh, a group of Ontario dyers got together and all offered unicorn yarn and the proceeds went to a... Uh, um, LGBTQIA charity. Um, so uh, this is the Loving Paths yarn and you can see I'm just going but you know what these aren't even my full foot yet they look kind of long but with my new with my new tool from Spin Me a Yarn um, I actually found out that I need to knit a 10 inch 10, 10 and a bit inch foot <laughs> and then I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. Oh, what did you find, babe? I actually babe? found something, and I want to show it. This was my knitted hat when I was a baby. It was a pretty squishy. Mm -hmm. I think they're filled with stuffing. That's right. Let's see if I can still wear it. Oh my goodness, that's never gonna go in your head now. Oh, <laughs> it still goes on. Oh my goodness. Maybe you can sit down and model it. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good look. Yeah, it, it looks, oh, it, it needs this kind of dance move. Yes, yeah. very nice. Okay, and um, I the last thing that I have to show is that I just caked up my Le Bien Aimé um, in the colorway Sari, and I have started the, what's it called? Deep V? by Jessie May. I'll get the name up here so everybody will have it straight. Oh, what are you wearing now? Now this is a velvet acorn pattern, isn't it? Stand up, stand up, I'll do up the, I'll do it up, do up a button for you. And the yarn is from Lichen and Lace. Marsh Lily is the colorway. Um, wow. And I put these gold buttons on it and it's got a peplum. So let's, let's just show the peplum. See, it's got like this little frill around the bottom. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, you can kind of see the frills. Yeah, you can see the frill, so very nice. nice. <laughs> so this is my cross stitch, I think. Here, let me just show you guys the pattern. So I think you, you don't need to unwrap it anymore. Okay. It's there. So it's a dog, I think, with a bunch of flowers. Mm -hmm. And you can see at the top, there's a different kind of things I need to do. Mm -hmm. That's like the the code for what color to use. It's a little close to the camera, so it's a bit blurry. Okay. Yeah. 
That's things you learn, right? And what else have you got? Nice. And you can show that close up. So that's the very corner, right? And what did mommy do for you I to tried. make it a bit easier? She colored like the pink thing, mm -hmm. but I only did the brown thing. That's how much I did the brown. Yeah, it's happening. Great job so far. That's your very first fiber art. <laughs> Excellent. It's okay. There's a there's a needle attached to it. You should probably watch that, Evelyn. Pick it up because the needle's attached right here. You can put it in the box. Yeah, great work so far. So that's all we have for you today. And right now, please get excited because the interview this week. Woo! Woo! Yeah, excitement. The interview this week is with Marisa from Pretty Little Yarns. Yay! Which is both a, an online yarn shop um, as well as housing her dye pretty yarn and fiber studio arts which includes her hand dyed yarns and her hand dyed fiber and it's all very beautiful so i hope you enjoy this interview bye Evelyn. are you gonna say bye oh show bye show bye show bye is that gonna be the new, is that gonna be the new saying show bye. okay bye and we are live Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to Marisa from Pretty Little Yarns. I am super excited to speak to you today. Ever since I first saw your yarns on Instagram, I knew that this was someone who was super dynamic with color that I wanted to speak to and kind of like get to know a little bit of what makes the whole Pretty Little Yarns uh, world tick. Thanks so much for having me. It's so exciting. <laughs> so exciting to be here. Yeah. You first thought about opening your yarn store back in 2016. Um, and now Pretty, Le Pretty Little Yarns is a beautifully curated reality. Um, what was that final push? What was the thing that finally helped you get to the point of opening when you opened in 2018? Well, um, I started thinking about opening um, kind of when I had my son was just starting to go into daycare and I was still home. And so I was, I was kind of transitioning. And then in the process of getting everything ready, I got pregnant with my second son. So that's why there's a bit of a gap between the 2016 and the 2018, because the sleepless nights and the, you know, all of that that go along with it was uh, a bit much for me to open a full business at the time. But I did like slowly plug away at it and I got myself incorporated and all of that stuff while I was, you know, doing the whole first year of motherhood uh, with the second one. And then when I opened in 2018, um, basically it was just when everything was done. <laughs> you know, getting everything photographed and building the website and all of that fun stuff kind of took some time. Oh yeah, fully. Kids have a, like a, a knack for making you zig when you thought you were going to zag. And yeah. I totally hear that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. Yeah. How does your background in interior design lend to the beautiful yarn you create as part of Dye Pretty Yarn Plus, your indie dye company? Um, so yeah, Dye Pretty Yarn and Fiber came about because I just have always loved color. So um, when I was in school for design and when I was working as an interior designer, color was my thing. I mean, I can do all the other stuff, the space planning and all the all nuts and bolts as well. Um, but right from when I first started in the industry, like my boss would be like, okay, can you go look at these colors? Because it's something that I am good at. Um, and I'm not typically one to like toot my own horn, but it is just something I do. So <laughs> it's my superpower. Um, and so I think that just having had that background or that ability to play with colors so much more already in different fields um, kind of lets me play a little bit better in this field. And I have like um, an understanding of like color theory going in. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people do when they start dying already, but like, I know what, what not to mix because it'll make something that looks gross, um, without having to experiment. <laughs> um, but plenty of things turn out looking gross anyways. 
hey, that's part of the experimentation, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think that that totally, um, it has been super helpful. So yeah, um, when you're in design school, they teach you a design process, which obviously applies to interior design, but it can apply to designing anything. So whether that's designing a pattern, I've got a couple of patterns that I've been working on for a long time, but I digress. And I've got, you know, my, my dyed projects that I'm making and my stitch markers and everything goes through that design process. Um, sometimes a shorter version, but it all goes through it and it helps me to get from what I want to the finished project. And that helps get the, the dyed yarn to be what I want. So it's kind of like an organizational process that keeps yeah. you, yeah. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a, an awesome tool. And like I said at the beginning, um, you know, your yarn really struck me. And I think in a world where there's so much out there um, for someone who doesn't know Pretty Little Yarns to stop and say, hey, I need to repost this yarn. I think this probably uh, speaks to your background in interior design, and all of your color theory coming out in your yarn. Yeah, and I'm super flattered every time someone stops because I'm I'm never expecting it. I'm always like, oh, they like me. They really like me. <laughs> they really do. We really do. <laughs> so you are so well versed in so many fiber arts. Like when I read your bio on your website, I was kind of blown away. I was a little intimidated. I was like, whoa, um, you know, knitting, crochet, spinning, felting, not to mention dyeing. So. How do you make time for all of them? And is there something that you're gravitating towards these days? Yeah, so I think that um, I'm not an expert at all of them by any means. And I think that the trick is, is that I don't make time for all of them because <laughs> that would be impossible. So I kind of, I kind of have like little fireworks of inspiration where I like, I like something and I get right into it and I spin a bunch and then I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. Now I need to crochet. And then I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. And, and then I, you know, I'll die. And like, I just go through these like cycles of, of things that I have to do or, you know, that I feel compelled to do. And so there's not really a, a knack to it or a trick to it. Um, I don't craft as much as I would like lately. Uh, because life and I mean, I die and, and do those kinds of things for the shop, but the kind of recreational crafting gets put to the side a lot. But um, yeah, I just kind of bounce around. I think it was, um, do you follow maybe Marissa Maid on Instagram? I think I do, I think I do. She's lovely. And she posted something at the beginning of the pandemic where um, you know, a lot of people lost their spark for crafting because of isolation and just all the different social justice things going on. And, and it was hard to stay motivated or creative. And uh, one of the things that she said really stuck with me and it was like, follow, I'm not gonna say it as eloquently, but like follow where your inspiration takes you. Don't stick with like knitting because you feel like you have to finish the sweater that you're working on. If you feel like you want to um, dye yarn today, then dye yarn. If you feel like you want to felt today, felt. And if you feel like photography is your art today, then do that. And I, I kind of took that to heart because at the time I was trying to like force myself and it takes all the creativity and the fun out of it. So um, I just let myself go where life takes me now um, when it comes to my crafts and my creativity. So I think it ends up being a lot more authentic that way. Yes, it sounds like you've got a great handle on how to have a really healthy outlet for your creativity. You're like, okay, what do I want? What do I want to do? Not <laughs> locked into that one thing, right? Oh, sounds like a very good idea that a lot of us could learn from. <laughs> Um, can we possibly get a little taste of what's new, what's up and coming for Pretty Little Yarns? I'm doing a collaboration with the Pinecone Project, and it is called Curiously Wild, and it is um, yarn or accessories or notions inspired by pairs of animals. So um, I'm doing clownfish, and she's doing anemone. And there are other makers who are doing different pairs as well. So 
I have a clownfish yarn, which I think if you were on my um, reels lately, then you would have seen the making of this guy, but this is it finished. Yes, so, it's gorgeous. So I've got it on a couple of bases here. So this is the fingering. Wow. Like blue. That's so like beautiful. Blue with, um, yeah, I wanted to make clownfish without it looking like Halloween yarn, which was the <laughs> design brief, make, make yarn that doesn't look like Halloween, but evokes clownfish. And this is where I ended up. So that is the one thing that's getting released next weekend. And it also, of course, has a little stitch marker set to go with it. Because what's the point if I can't needle felt the tiny right. little things? So this guy's not done yet. But <gasps> yes. We love a clown finish. <laughs> yeah. He's the little baby. I gotta add some fins and some black stripes to him, but he's happening. Um, also coming to the website soon when I get these photographed. Um, is the yarn that I dyed with Stitch Noir the other week. It has not been photographed and made available yet, but this is Crocs by the Campfire. Wow. And I've got it on three bases. I've got it on fingering. I've got it on this beautiful, like this is just a one-off. This whole colorway is just a one-off. So I've got this beautiful sparkly one, some fingering and some sport. Wow. Oh my goodness. Look at the colors in that. Yeah, there. So this one was fun to do. It was inspired by a photograph that was chosen by our followers. And then Stitch Noir did her interpretation. And um, I'm calling everybody by their like business slash Instagram handle instead of by their real name, um, which makes it easier for everyone to look yes. them up, but also sounds really impersonal. I swear I like the people too, but... <laughs> But it was fun to, to do this. So the people picked a um, campfire picture that was really dramatic. And so we, we each took a crack at it. So yeah, so that is the two big, exciting things coming to the shop. And um, yeah, I will probably be dyeing actually a bunch of fiber because I am going to be going to the Muskoka Yarn and Fiber Fest at the end of August in the flesh so wow. so I've got some fiber and some yarn and I will try to be getting that dyed up ready for that in-person fiber festival fantastic maybe I need to make a little trip up there to Muskoka yeah I mean there's worse places you could spend the day there really are <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful up there and I've never been to that fiber festival so it sounds good to me yeah all right so anything on the hook or the needle or you know the spindle yeah um I can show you this has been on I am probably because I follow my motivation and my inspiration I am the slowest project finisher ever <laughs> so I've been working on this for a long time I mean I started it in the pandemic so that's not too bad but so wow, that good. color melt. It's a Jesse May ripple tank, cam ripple camisole. I knew it was. I was like, that's Jesse May. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and the, the yarn is from a couple of Christmases back. I did an like craft bent calendar and I like curated it from a bunch of different dyers and makers. And this gradient set were the minis from um, Lake Knit Yarns. So wow. I really like carrying like local and um, indie dyers and stuff like that in our in our shop. So um, this is one of them that I brought on. And I actually have two more sets of this in the shop if anybody really likes it, so. Oh, wow. Well, I, I will be linking your shop in the description. So I'm sure that's yeah. gonna get nabbed. So yeah, so that's fun. And it just kind of, you know, does that gradient all by itself. Um, other things that are around, I 
am dying to, and for no real reason other than I saw a bee yesterday, want to make a bumblebee out of my fuzzy yarn or my fuzzy fiber. So that will be next for that. And at some point I'm gonna finish spinning this. And I'm just gonna grab it. So this is my latest spin and it's in timeout because A, <laughs> it is enormous <laughs> and it barely will fit on here. And B, I've run out of, I was two plying it and I've run out of the second ply, which means I need to learn how to bracelet ply and I don't know how, and I haven't given myself the time to learn. And so it just sits here taking up both my spindles and <laughs> being annoying. So yeah, so that's, that's what's on the spindle. And is bracelet plying when you ply, like, are you going to have to ply that smaller spindle like back on itself or something? Yeah. So you like make a bracelet of sorts with it around your hand. And then you're basically taking from the end that's attached to this, the big spindle and mm -hmm. the end that's at the other end to make a two ply yarn. And it ends up being, it allows you to use up all your yarn into those two ply rather than having this odd bit of singles left at the end. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I know a lot of people that are getting into uh, spinning more and more and mm -hmm. I'm almost about to take the plunge. <laughs> Yeah, I started spinning with just a spindle and um, it drove me a little bit crazy because I always dropped it. And then I took a class with um, the Purple Pearl, uh, with one of the girls from the Purple Pearl when it existed. And she was able to make it, I don't know, click in my head. And then mm -hmm. I was off to the races. And then like four months later, I was like, this takes so long. I want a wheel. And then I was trolling on Ravelry to see what I could find. Like, oh, is there going to, because it's so hard to find secondhand wheels. I didn't want to buy yeah. a brand new one because I didn't know if it was just a flash in the pan or like a real thing that I was going to be doing. And then it turned out that um, one of the dyers actually who came on board right when I started the shop, um, Sinister Yarns, she was getting rid of her wheel and she's only in Aurora and I live in Woodbridge. So I was like, okay, I can drive. I don't have to pay shipping. I, this is the gods are telling me to buy a wheel at this point. So <laughs> I have to appease them lest they, you know, smite me or something. <laughs> and do you like so much, do you enjoy the wheel? Like, is it a lot easier? Is it a lot I love my wheel. My kids love my wheel too much. So it is, it doesn't get as much use as I would like. And um, it often gets like tampered with when I'm not paying attention. So it's currently out of commission because somebody broke the, the whirl part and I have to replace it. And they broke it and didn't tell me. So I don't, I, it got like the, the bit got cleaned up. And so I can't even glue it back together. Yeah, there are. Ooh. Have kids, Ooh. they said. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yes, children. Ugh. They're good. <laughs> oh my yes. gosh. So I love um, my There's nothing better than like sitting outside with a wheel and like just treadling. And it's very, I don't know, it makes you feel like you're time traveling, I find. I've heard it's like, very kind of like calming and mesmerizing. Yeah. Okay. I, I need to chase that feeling. That sounds, that sounds very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you uh, carry all these beautiful Ontario yarns. Do you want to mention a couple uh, more the yarn dyers that you carry in your shop? Sure. Yeah. So um, one of our biggest uh, lines is from um, Sweet Paprika. They're not from Ontario, they're from Montreal, but um, their line is lovely. I have their fingering, their worsted and their um, DK. Uh, and um, I also have some of their kits and they're really lovely because they're like kind of semi-solids, like they're solids, but they're hand dyed. So they're really beautiful to like pair with other other yarns. And I think that that makes the other yarns really sing. So. Um, that's fun. I also have um, yarn indulgences. The colors that I have from her are all um, like exclusive to our shop, which is really beautiful and really fun. 
Um, I have Sinister Yarns. Um, and again, I don't know if you can get Sinister Yarns anywhere else at this point, because um, I don't think they're dying anymore. So but okay. I have some of their stuff still. And I have Essence of Autumn. If you follow Essence of Autumn, her work is gorgeous. And I have some of hers still. And of course I have mine. And then um, it's really important to me that I don't price anybody out of knitting. So I also carry Cascade because I think it's just such a great like step from, you know, going from your traditional big box yarn and you're starting to take your knitting more seriously, but maybe you're not at indie dyer level seriousness or your budget doesn't allow for it or you're making a blanket or you're making for kids who aren't going to get you know that aren't going to take care of the garment as well it's such a workhorse yarn that just like takes a beating and and still looks great so um and is fun to work with so I carry a few of their lines as well so yeah that's yeah, it's so fantastic to have that range so that yeah. exactly nobody is not able to craft, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is something exciting going on for you this weekend, though. Absolutely. I yes, there is. So tomorrow starts the first day of Knit City Virtual. And you can catch all kinds of vendors and teachers and instructors um, doing workshops and trunk shows all weekend long. Mine is on Sunday from 2 till 3 p.m. local time, Eastern Daylight Time. Um, it'll be 11 a.m. if you're watching somewhere in the mountains. Um, but yeah, that's that's coming up this weekend. So on, on our trunk show virtual thing this weekend, I will be talking a bit more about my yarns and about the yarns that I carry and showing some of those off. And then I'll be doing a demonstration um, where the audience will get to choose whether I'm going to felt something um, or weave like a little baby weaving for them live. So that is so cute. Can we see that little weaving a little closer? Yeah. So adorable. It just shows you how you could make something absolutely so beautiful. Um, this guy took just a night. This was like a little palette cleanser. Yeah. 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 So great to have those little tiny like blips of projects that you you start and finish in like a few hours and yeah. <laughs> you feel that accomplishment. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. I want to thank you so much, Marisa, for joining me. And I think everyone will enjoy this so much, having this connection to your yarn shop, your dye shop and all about you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun to talk to you. And and like, I'm so glad that through this, I was able to find your podcast and start watching that. It's been so fun to see what you're doing as well. It's a bit of a silly party, but you know. That's, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I hope that the children stay far away from your spinning wheel. <laughs> That's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen, but we can pretend. We can pretend. <laughs> Let's dream up a world where the children don't play. You know, um, my son took my measuring tape and he pulled it out to its full length multiple times until it didn't work anymore. But you just got to hug me, kiss me after. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you so much. And no I hope you have a great night. And we'll Thank see you, you when the podcast airs. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a good okay, one. Bye. Bye. I'm such a nerd that I think it's all super interesting and fun. And so, and I think that like lots of other people do. It's like, we never meet the people. Yeah, no, I love it. And I love it about everyone else. I'm just, I always forget that I'm one of those people to someone else. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you want to Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, a you're a fiber celebrity. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you have to deal with your fame now. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'll, get, I'll start practicing my signature. <laughs> yeah yeah okay exactly like at the muskoka fiber festival you know would you like your receipt printed with a signature like i can do that for you <laughs> it's gonna be like pop rotsy like flies you know what i'm saying yeah so for sure. get right well, well if you come for sure stop by the booth and say hi i'm outside oh i 100 percent will
I will 100% use my like yarn celebrity like connections. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Like a pretend backstage pass. You'll just be going around everywhere. Yes. And I'll be like <laughs> shielding you from like all the people trying to knock down your stand with excitement. Okay. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> oh, like, I'm gone. This child. Like she literally had like four nuggets of pasta left in her bowl and she's yelling at me to reheat her pasta. Okay. That's um, something a little guy okay. would do because he gets mad when things aren't aren't like the right temperature. He'll be like, oh, can I can't eat this now. It is cold. Send it back. Yes, because <laughs> these small people, I know these small people are such tyrants. Don't be jealous of my knitting. Don't be jealous of my knitting. You can say that you are not. My whole body starts to shake yarn. My heart starts to palpitate yarn.